So our uh, guest that we're going to talk to now, actually, we're scheduled um, a week or two ago. I, I got sick. I rarely call out sick, and I just couldn't make it in that day. A major migraine. We knew you wouldn't want to miss this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you guys rescheduled this, which is nice, because uh, uh, the two guys, the brothers that we have, uh, one is on the phone and one is here in our studio. Combined together, they've worked with... Uh, uh, the Muppet Sesame Street, uh, Between the Lions, uh, book animation, voices, all kinds of kids entertainment, which is really, really cool. And uh, one of them lives locally. Let's welcome him first, Mr. Gene Beretta. Yay! Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. How you doing, Gene? And Gene, you called in uh, when we were uh, talking about the, uh, were we talking about Sesame Street or the Muppets? I think or? it was the Elmo yeah, dilemma. Elmo. No, no, no. What was it? Well, we were talking about, you started talking about dinosaurs and how much you like the show. Your favorite show ever, Preston, oh, Dinosaurs. Oh, that was was it. It. Right. it was a much more benevolent conversation. Yeah. Yes, it was the dinosaur. That's right. So I just called in to tell you that my brother worked on it. That's and correct. Said, Great. You, you, yeah, I was, and the show had been on for a number of years. I was aware of it, but there was people like, well, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, early 90s it was on. I guess 91 through 94, I think it was. And it was the Henson, the Henson people, right? Yeah. Who, who, who did all the, I mean, it was all effects, it all was. Yeah, it was, know, well, it was all big and, suits with animatronic faces. Right. And Billy can tell you more about, more specifically about that. Well, That's I'll, cool. I'll get him on in a second. Gene, sure. about you, though, the reading, though, but you have done illustrations and, and animation work for, for Sesame Street? I did animation work for Sesame Street, yeah. Um, my illustration work, my primary career is illustration and writing children's books. Mm -hmm. And so I started as an illustrator, and I've been writing for five or six years as well. And you've done storyboarding as well, right? For films? storyboarding, well, for Muppets from Space. That was my one storyboarding project. And I've done character design work for the Henson Company as well. From what we hear, and obviously I'm I'm sure your your, your brother will will bear this out, it, it, it is every bit as magical as you would hope it would be, correct? Yes, and they're they're just a great bunch of people to be working with. I yeah, mean, you you really Jim Henson's spirit lives on in production and, and on the sets, and it's how just great. a very warm group of people and really creative. This is awesome that you do you know illustrations for children's books because I don't know if you know this or not, but Casey has an idea <laughs> for a children's book. Really, like I'm Casey was to hear. Casey was on Gene the second right, walked right. in the studio. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that he was a children's book uh, author and illustrator, so uh, I I feel. Like I have a really good idea for. Uh, um, Don't tip your hand on air. No, no, no. Yeah. But do you get that a lot? People coming up to you with their ideas. I do. Yeah. yeah. So well, I that- kind of have a you know I have a standard email that I send back to to help them the best way possible. But it's really not. I'm not the best person to throw the idea off. I of. think. Well, that, go ahead, guys. No, I, well, because I wanted to ask you that. I was going to say Casey did ask you about that, but I actually did take a children's book writing class, and I wrote a children's book, and then and that was you know at the end of the class you had to have have written one, and the, mm-hmm. you know the, you read it to the class, and the teacher went over it, and all that kind of stuff. And I still have it, but and I never did anything with it. But how I guess easy or Hard. There are so many children's books. How hard is it to actually, you know, get it out there? It's very difficult. I started just as an illustrator, and my plan was to get my name known as an illustrator first. So when I started submitting manuscripts, I wouldn't be an anonymous name on right. the pile. Okay. And you're like a studio musician, basically, like a yeah, hired right. gun. Yeah. Hence yeah. me asking you about it, because I don't want to be an anonymous name on the pile, because I feel like my my story is a good idea. Right. I mean, one big tip I can give all aspiring writers out there is to a lot of people who do picture books think they need to get it illustrated before they submit it, but that's the opposite is true. It's counterproductive. The 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 editor and the art directors want to be the ones to marry the illustrator with okay. the author. And you might give them something with the images that would completely destroy their their passion right. for the manuscript. Well, it, and I think a lot of people think, well, they're so simple. Anyone can do it, but you you need to, you need to get the right thing that catches at the right moment. That's yes. mm-hmm. and and, and, and also and kids are known for being fickle, right? Right, and it's deceptively simple. I mean, it's it's really difficult to learn to write concisely to get the right message out without sen- sounding um, like you're lecturing. Right, yeah. um, be entertaining. All that gets and, goes and into there it. is isn't there there is a special way to keep the child's attention. Yeah, sure. And, and not just with the illustrations, but with the words as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the vocabulary has to be appropriate and uh, you know age appropriate, and there's a lot that goes into it. I don't know if you guys remember in the the movie uh, um, um, Along Came Polly, uh, Jennifer Anson's character yeah. writes a book called The Arm Who uh, Kid Who Got His Arm Blown Off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she did that? <laughs> she I, did I that. had that on my roster. You Damn did. it! Yeah. Well, let's get your brother on the line. Yes, please. Uh, and he is in England He's right in now? London, yeah. Does he live there? No, they're off doing the next Muppet movie. 
Oh, yes. no kidding. Is a, and, uh, oh, we'll ask him. And by the way, your brother Bill, for those who don't know, he does some of the voices of the characters that you know very well. Let's welcome uh, Bill Beretta. To yeah. yeah. Uh, this morning. And now, I don't know, Casey, this thing, I hit the button and nothing came up. Bill, are you there? Here, let me, let me try this. It might Here, be a, a wonky. I'll pretend to be Billy while you're yeah. All right, fair enough. Well, we can filter your voice and make it sound like I found out. Hello? Hello? Yeah, there he is. Hey. Hey. Hey, How you doing, Bill? I'm good. How are you guys? We're, we're doing great. So your, your brother Gene is here in studio, as I'm sure. Uh, oh, you, you no. Just, I know. <laughs> it was the only way we could get to you, though, man. Yeah. Oh, we, right. From the get-go, we consider him dead weight. So, so. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're working on the next Muppet movie right now? We are. We're just getting, we're gearing up to make the next one. Oh, man. And who did I just hear recently as, as, as attached? Is it Kevin Spacey or? No, we have uh, 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 Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell from uh, uh, the Modern, Modern, Modern Family. Family, yes. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Tina Fey is still in the works, but that's what Very cool. Did, didn't yeah. I just see something about Ricky Gervais, Billy? And that's yeah, that's the one we're just waiting on for for sure. But that's looking pretty good too. This is this is such a, a great thing. Then uh, I know Casey's a huge Muppets a fan, and, and I guess we all are as well. But the fact that it's it's now come into its uh, its next phase and being embraced, um, you know, so, so warmly. But the it, for you and we were we were talking with your brother about it. Uh, the whole Jim Henson vibe still permeates the company, correct? Oh yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's Jim created, I think, an environment where where he brought in people, you know, around him that he loved to be around, to be with, and those relationships, I think, feed the characters and and everything that they do. So, did you Did you ever get to meet him? I did actually. I never got to work with him, but uh, I met him uh, when I was younger uh, through a, his son Brian. His son Brian and I became friends when we were younger, as well as with Gene as well, and. Um, so I met him a few times, uh, yeah, when I was younger, but I, I just never, ne I didn't start working with the company until 90. So he passed away that year. Wow. I, um, I, I bought the box set for the first season. I think it was a Fraggle Rock and, and, oh, yeah. and in it was like a letter, um, that Jim Henson had written or, uh, and it was just basically what he was trying to accomplish, not just with Fraggle Rock, but uh, he wasn't just trying to like make funny puppets. Yeah. He really was trying to make society better. Oh yeah, and yeah. And, and it's it is pretty crazy. And one of my favorite Christmas movies is Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, oh. which really isn't even about Christmas. It's just about the over commercialization and you know the lengths that people go to, you know, just to make sure that somebody else you know yeah. gets right. a gift or, or whatever. And and um, one yeah. of the greatest. One of the greatest Muppet songs I think ever written uh, by Paul Williams is in Emmett Otter's Christmas. It's called "When the River Meets the Sea." Yeah, when the river <laughs> meets yeah. the sea. Yeah, it's a good one. Song. It's a beautiful, beautiful. song. Yeah.